What's up guys? I realize that sometimes my videos come out in a more conversational format and that's true. I do definitely just go into my videos and I conversationally explain my ideas. I don't always have like a fully fleshed out or drafted idea. I'm kind of winging it. But as I edit the video and sometimes film it a second time, I get my ideas out pretty much in the way that I would like to. But I do think it could be helpful to have a little introduction to kind of warm you guys up to the video you're about to watch. So maybe this will be a bit of a thing from now on. We'll see. But this video is essentially my racket journey update. And I have acquired some very strict preferences over the years. And my racket journey has been uh, quite long. And it's mostly due to having something that is hard to achieve. I wanted an extended length racket, but the options are just so limited. So some of my journey was about trying what was available and then not really being satisfied and starting to extend rackets that were standard length. I even went that far, right? And then maybe a couple of other extended length rackets came out and that kind of opened up the doors a little bit again. But then I tried standard length again and it blew my mind how much more stable standard length rackets were. But then I was able to put that into perspective because I understood, wow, there really is a big stability difference between standard and extended length. So I know why now. That's not something people really talk about, but that's why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to share my experience because my experience covers some bases that are just kind of untalked about, especially when it comes to swing weight and twist weight regarding extended length rackets. There's a lot of pros and cons between standard and extended length that people just don't talk about. They're not aware of it at all. So I talk about that a little bit. I talk about how I've acquired the preferences I have now, and that essentially explains why I have the rackets I currently have, but also why a couple of them haven't made the cut. And sometime soon, I think I should make a video on how to pick a racket, or at least how to demo a racket. As someone who's been on that journey longer than ideal, Although I had a lot of fun along the way, there was no stopping me really. I just had to go about it the way I was. I was going down a path that most people aren't going down. Most people aren't trying to find an extended length racket. Most people aren't thinking about small grommet holes and parallel drilling. There's a reason that I have been on a racket journey this long, but most people probably wouldn't. But even if you went as deep in the rabbit hole as I did, I think I could help speed up the process. And for those of you that haven't or wouldn't, I think a video like that could still be Awesome. So there's my intro. Without further ado, let's take this video outside. It's a little bit windy. The neighbors make some noise. Overall, though, it's fine and we have fun with it. So without further ado, let's take this video outside, shall we? What's up, guys? Let's start this off with a cold one. You guys ever drink seltzer water? I think it's so refreshing, but there are a lot of mediocre brands out there. This is not one of them. I'm not sponsored by these guys. I just want you guys to be on my level with that seltzer water. I want you to know it's good. Oh, it just hits the spot. It's so clean. All right. So this is a video on my racket journey so far. Let's get you updated. So far I got these, but some of these are going and these. This one is that Serena blade that I cut a half inch off of, which has a hair under the handle. Some of you want me to DNA test that, which is understandable. And so far I like this racket. So I'm going to put that one on this side. So far it makes the cut. Both of these Pro Canixes are two, and one of them is standard length. I'll talk about that more later, but those will both go to the keep side as well. This is another Pro Canix. It has the same string pattern as the other two here, like literally same. The grommet is interchangeable. So you have the same exact string pattern in a different racket, which really intrigued me. But this racket feels kind of terrible. I don't know if it's the Weiss Cannon strings or if it's just the racket. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this. I might give it one more shot with zero and that way I'll know for sure if I just like it or not. It's my first time trying Weiss Cannon for myself. So maybe it's the strings. I strung it pretty low though, like low 40s, maybe 42, which is a little higher than I might string zero because I don't expect it to hold tension as well as zero. But that being said, it just feels not good. This is the Blade 104. It's from the V6 series of the Blade and is actually the only one of the Blades, I think, to not have countervail from that generation. That Serena I have has countervail and this one doesn't, which was part of the attraction. I never really had a countervail racket, so I didn't really get all the beef with it. I'm not saying it's unjustified. I'm just saying I don't really have any experience with the countervail rackets. People seem to feel disconnected from the feedback on the string bed on those countervail rackets. And I think Wilson eventually took note of that and stopped with the countervail. You know how racket companies are always finding a new way to dampen things. It's always reducing harmful vibrations or increasing feel 
It's always one of those two things. They're always doing that or the other. So whatever. The reason I wanted this, it's extended length. It's an 18 by 19, so that's kind of a cool string pattern. And it's not too open either. It's a bigger head size. I'm starting to think bigger head sizes are actually really cool on extended length rackets. And I guess I'll talk about that at this point in the video. You have a dilemma with extended length rackets because just by increasing the length, you increase the swing weight. So the racket becomes harder to swing on top of being longer without any of the benefits you would typically get from higher swing weight by adding weight. So you could, in theory, have a much heavier standard length racket that is way more stable than an extended length racket of equal swing weight. And that is definitely a drawback that I feel in a lot of situations. So now that I understand that, it's definitely had me dial back my desire to have an extended length racket, but I'm still interested with the idea. I just don't think I can push that length as far as I wanted to originally. I just don't think that's possible to have that length and still be competitive with the way that I play. I mean, it's a really slippery slope and the drawbacks, I think, very quickly start to outweigh the benefits of having more length. But that is obviously not to say that the length doesn't have benefits. It's just that there is a trade-off. But I really like this racket. I got it for only $100 brand new, which is a total steal. Honestly, if I could buy more of these, I probably would. But I need more time with this racket. That being said, so far, really, really meshing well with it. The clever thing about a bigger head size is that it has a higher twist weight because the three and the nine area are further apart, increasing the twist weight, just like how extending a racket would increase the swing weight. And so I think that's clever because when you make the racket longer, the swing weight increases. And so racket companies decrease the weight in the head to bring the swing weight back down a bit. That way, despite the fact that it's longer, it's still within a manageable swing weight. However, by taking so much weight out of the head, it does mess with things like plow through and stability. But I think the increase in twist weight you get from increasing the head size to something like a 104 can help make up for some of the instability that comes with removing the weight. In other words, the weight that is in the racket can go a little further to stabilize the racket because the racket is larger. So in some ways, I feel like that cancels out some of the negatives of extending a racket and taking the weight out. On top of that, a bigger head size probably means that you have a larger margin of error on the racket. Like your miss hits might not feel so bad, the sweet spot might be a little bigger, things like that. And just having that bigger surface area on your racket I feel like also helps to cancel out one of the cons of extended length rackets, which is precision. Since the racket is longer, this kind of wrist movement is going to move the racket head more than it would on a standard length racket. So a bigger face, I think, helps to make up for that difference a bit. So all in all, for all those reasons, I think having a slightly larger head can be a really good idea when you have a slightly longer length racket, which is really why the 102 and the 104 intrigue me so much. The 102 blade being the Serena Williams blade. So for now, I guess those are all going on the keep side, except for this Pro Ken X, which I'm kind of like, eh, we'll see what I do. And last, I have this Angel. I'm not keeping this Angel. I have a few small issues with this. One, this racket is foam filled, so it just has a certain heaviness to it that you can't really do anything about. Like the racket is just, more dense and heavy in its stock form. And I ordered it in an extended length, but the swing weight was already too high. I've been cutting it down, but more so than just the swing weight, which is actually not really the problem. I've cut it down to 27 and a quarter inch, so it's fine now. But the racket has a really elongated head shape. It almost looks like a football a little bit more than other tennis rackets do. And I was just using the Blade 104 as an example, but one of the reasons that racket is so stable is because that larger head size increases the twist weight of the racket. This one has a high swing weight already, but such a narrow head that the twist weight is actually lower. So what you have here is like a low twist weight, high swing weight racket, which has some really cool side effects. I feel like some of the top spin it can generate is super gnarly, but it's just really unstable on top of being kind of hard to swing for how unstable it is. And at least at this length, but honestly, if I cut down another quarter inch, if I tried to add weight around the three and the nine area to increase the twist weight, it's also going to increase the swing weight. And I don't really want to increase the swing weight. It's already kind of at that territory where I don't want any more, but I need it to increase the stability. So it's a bit of a dilemma with this racket. On top of that, when you string this racket, I don't feel like it does the best job of managing the strings. There's a couple of shared holes here and some some grommets do a nice job. They have like a little fin sticking up that will help separate the strings. That way the string can kind of go to the left or the right side of that slot that runs down this grommet. The Angel doesn't really have anything like that. And there's a couple of areas on the racket where the strings, especially in the shared holes or anytime you're going over another set of strings, 
they kind of want to cross over each other and you really want to avoid that when you're doing a string job but this grommet makes that a bit of a struggle and that's kind of annoying like there have been a couple times where i've had to use a dowel or pliers to push the strings into the position they should have been in during the string job i think this is one of those things where people that string rackets will know what i'm talking about but yeah that's kind of annoying when it comes to stringing this racket and yeah that's pretty much it it's kind of heavy has a high swing weight low twist weight because it's a narrow head shape so it's very floppy and i can't increase the twist weight without also increasing the swing weight which i don't want to do so don't know if i can be happy with this racket but it is a very, very dense 18 by 20 string pattern, and I like the idea of that. Honestly, I just wish that the head shape was a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. And this is a 97. Maybe for a racket like this, a 98 or even a 100 would be a little better, especially or as long as it was also a little bit wider in shape. That's what I would prefer. Yeah, you guys might not be able to see it quite super well, but this Pro Kenex is a 100 square inch head. And there's not really any difference in the length of the head, but it is definitely a little bit wider. And I think that little bit of width goes a long way into making that racket feel more stable than this one. Ooh, phone call. Anyway, but this one's going to go on the right side <laughs> or the left side. Who's calling me? I guess I missed the call. Anyway, Angel's going on the left side. I'm definitely not going to be keeping this racket, but Angel does have another racket that is an 18 by 19. My buddy has a couple of those on the way, and I'm very interested in trying one of those. So that should be interesting. I hope the head size and head shape is a little bit more wide. It's a 99. It's a new racket from them. It's called React. Awesome. So I look forward to that, and I look forward to narrowing down my selection of these rackets. I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm getting a little bit tired of fishing around the rabbit hole here. It was never really my intention to get this lost in my racket journey, but I don't have any regrets. I had some strong preferences in the beginning for extended length rackets, so I was working within a narrow box. And with such limited options, you try to get creative to find something that fits your weird criteria. A lot of time passes as I'm along on that journey, and I eventually learn the dilemma of extended length rackets and swing weight, etc. And on top of that, I've acquired a preference for parallel drilling, but then I noticed the crooked crosses issue. So now I'm back to being okay with standard length. Still like the idea of extended length if I can make it work. And I like the idea of parallel drilling, but ultimately I want small grommet holes to manage a more consistent string bed. And on top of that, I want a more dense string pattern, something like 18 by 19, 16 by 20, because I like to string it low, but I don't want an uncontrollable launch angle. Gosh, this wind. I want a predictable trampoline effect, and I like the durability I get out of a denser string pattern. So those are my preferences. That's my reasons why I have those preferences. And I've tried just about every racket I think worth trying that fits that criteria now. So for now, that Angel is kind of the last one. I hope to narrow it down to one of these. Maybe I'll keep a couple of them. I'm sure I'll try more rackets again in the future, but I'm hoping to focus on something else as opposed to finding my next racket because it's a tiring journey. So I'm not saying I'm gonna settle down forever once I find my racket, but I do hope to settle down for a good while. But I'm more open now to the idea of keeping a couple of rackets around because some of them are just so interesting that I would like to keep them, especially the Serena Williams one that I cut down a half inch. I mean, that one's a keeper, especially with that little secret under the handle here. Plus I've already cut it down a half inch, right? I think this one will probably end up getting a custom paint job. I got such a good deal on it. Whatever. <laughs> And if I sell this one, I feel like I'm just gonna end up buying it again. So I better keep it around. I feel the same way for this one. This is just such a hard racket to get now. And I wanted this one so bad because the current Blade 104 caught my attention for so many reasons, but it's a 16 by 19. And this is basically the 18 by 19 version, which I wish the current version was. There's a possibility I get the current one again. We'll see. But that's mostly just because I can't really get this 18 by 19 version of the 104 anymore. It's really hard to find. So I got very lucky on this. And frankly, I play good tennis with both of these. I think for now I play better with the 104. Maybe it has something to do with the countervail on the Serena Williams one, but I think this one needs a little bit more customizing. And I have a string in here I don't know quite as well. I don't quite know what tension I like it at. And it's also possible I just like these other strings better. I mean, obviously I got Wasabi and Zero in here. Those are top tier strings for me. Don't even get me started on the snapback, right? In here I have Super Toro comparable snapback to zero and wasabi yeah maybe give it a try it's got a slightly different color it's kind of like a royal cobalt blue as opposed to this neon sky blue that zero has anyway that's where we're at if you guys want to see a video on how to demo a racket or how to pick a racket let me know if you'd like to see that leave that in the comments 
again, a lot of why I've been in the rabbit hole so long is because my preferences have evolved, but they were also difficult to begin with. But it's one of those things, once you start, it can be hard to stop. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you guys wanna support the channel, use my code, check out these links below in the description. I do get a small commission on these sales, but you also get a discount. It's a great way to help me and help you and help these brands grow. So all in all, it's a win-win for everybody involved. I hope you check out these links. These products are awesome and I use all of them myself. And yeah, I think I'm gonna use the rest of the daylight to go on a little bike ride or something. All right, have a good one. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.